In the heart of a sleeping city, where the streets twisted like a maze and the moonlight barely reached the cobblestones, a figure moved with the silence of a whisper. The night was his ally, the darkness his cloak. They called him the Shadow, a thief whose name was only spoken in hushed tones by those who knew of his deeds. As the clock tower struck midnight, the shadow slipped out from an alleyway, his eyes scanning the empty streets for an opportunity. His footsteps were soft, barely a breath against the cool night air. He had no particular target, for the shadow never planned his heists, he let the night guide him to those whose carelessness left them vulnerable to his talents. The shadow passed rows of dimly lit houses, his gaze catching on small signs of wealth, an ornate door knocker, a polished brass mailbox. But these homes were too secure, their doors locked and windows shut tight. He needed something easier, something inviting. As he turned down a quieter street, the shadow's keen eyes spotted a promising sight, a small house at the corner, its window left slightly ajar, the curtains fluttering gently in the breeze. He approached with caution, his senses heightened. A faint light glowed from inside, but it was dim enough to suggest that the occupants were either asleep or inattentive. With practiced ease, the shadow slipped through the gap in the window, landing silently on the plush carpet inside. The house was modest but comfortable, the kind of place where one might find a few valuable trinkets left out of sight, but not out of reach. He moved through the shadows, his gloved hands careful not to disturb anything that might make a noise. As he turned down a quieter street, the shadow's keen eyes spotted a promising sight, a small house at the corner, its window left slightly ajar the curtains fluttering gently in the breeze. He approached with caution, his senses heightened. A faint light glowed from inside, but it was dim enough to suggest that the occupants were either asleep or inattentive. With practiced ease, the shadow slipped through the gap in the window, landing silently on the plush carpet inside. The house was modest but comfortable, the kind of place where one might find a few valuable trinkets left out of sight, but not out of reach. He moved through the shadows, his gloved hands careful not to disturb anything that might make a noise. You won't find what you're looking for here, she said softly, her voice carrying a weight that made the shadow hesitate. He didn't move, his mind racing for a way out. The window was still open, his escape route clear, but something kept him rooted to the spot. The woman stepped forward, placing the candle on a nearby table. Go on, take it, she said, nodding towards the box. But know this, what you seek will bring you no peace. The shadow frowned, his instinct screaming at him to flee, but curiosity held him in place. He opened the box slowly, revealing a single, delicate locket nestled inside. It was beautiful, but simple, a piece of jewelry that held more sentimental value than monetary worth. As he stared at the locket, the woman spoke again, her voice filled with a quiet sadness. That belonged to my daughter. She's gone now, but I keep it to remember her by. The shadow felt a pang of guilt, something he hadn't felt in a long time. He was a thief, a shadow in the night, but this wasn't the treasure he had expected. He closed the box gently, his fingers lingering on the smooth wood. Without another word, he turned and slipped back out the window the night, swallowing him once more. But as he walked away from the house, the locket's image lingered in his mind, a reminder that not all treasures were meant to be stolen. For the first time in years, the shadow felt a stir of conscience, a whisper of a life he had long forgotten. And as he vanished into the darkness, he wondered if perhaps, one day, he might seek something more than just the easy job.